Hello everybody and uh, welcome to another um, Inkscape developer update. Uh, I'm an Inkscape developer developing for user needs and uh, it's the end of February so I want to give a big shout out to all of my patrons. Uh, thank you all very much for your support and allowing me to continue to um, help move Inkscape for, for, forwards. Uh, if you would like to jo join them uh, please do see the, the link b below and subscribe. And um, let's get started. So first of all, I want to jump straight in with administration. Um, for those who don't know, I actually sit on the Inkscape board, which is a very um, important job for administrating the Inkscape uh, project. Um, this week, we it felt like we had meetings basically every day of the week, uh, but it, it wasn't quite that bad. We had um, an infrastructure meeting which was basically a whole bunch of people in the Inkscape project from all the different teams got together and we discussed um, were the, were if you're contributing to Inkscape, uh, do we have all of the tools necessary to make sure that it's welcoming, that you can get on and, and do the job in the most efficient way? And um, we can see that we have some holes in the infrastructure currently. Uh, one of the biggest is that we currently don't have a word processor or spreadsheet capability, uh, which is something that a lot of contributors want. Um, this isn't something that developers necessarily uh, pay attention to, uh, but it is something that people who like write their news articles or want to organize events, they, they would, would much prefer these kinds of extra tools available. Um, so we basically put in some plans to uh, expand what uh, pieces of infrastructure we have available and you know how, how it's possible to, to do that kind, kind of thing. Um, then we also had a an Inkscape charter discussion. Now, um, currently the Inkscape board's elections are based upon um, the, the Inkscape community as it's defined, uh, which is incredibly narrowly defined as the people who appear in the authors list of Inkscape. And that list is uh, traditionally all of the people who, who hold copyrights in Inkscape, i.e. the developers. Uh, the problem with this is, is that the Inkscape community actually contains a lot of people who are not developers. Uh, people who look after the social media, people who uh, help in the forums, tons of individuals who are very active and should um, should get to vote on who represents the Inkscape pro project at the board level. Um, but in order to do this, we need to redefine the charter. In order to do that, we need to have a proper definition for what it means to be an Inkscape contributor, right? So uh, maybe you would, you just watch the Inkscape pro project from, from afar. Maybe you're not contributing yourself. Um, but say in the future, you end up contributing to Inkscape in some meaningful way, uh, you should get to vote too. Uh, and this Git pro pro project has always prided itself on being open and accessible to the most amount of contributors um, and not one of these open source pro projects that are sort of very cagey and, and developer centric. Um, so as a part of that, we need to start opening up the actual um, voting mechanics. Um, so it's great to get the ball ro rolling there. Uh, we also had the the About Screen con Contest part Party. Uh, this is because the... Um, the voting is now open. Uh, I recommend that everybody go and uh, vote for their favorite about screen. There's some amazing entries. I've, I've voted myself. Uh, you've got one day from the publication of this video in order to vote on this uh, about screen. And after it's finished, then we'll get to know what uh, Inkscape will look like for the next year. Uh, speaking of, I did actually have to do a bunch of bunch more fixes to the website. Uh, the RSS feed for galleries needed fixing, inline attachments for comments on resources needed fixing, um, and also people keep kept complaining about voting. The fact that they, you, you can only currently vote for one item. And there are so many great entries. So uh, I, I implemented a new piece of fun functionality called STV vote, vote, voting. It's basically an instant runoff system. Um, and it means that you can rank the, the votes that you want. So you can say, this is my most pref preferable vote. This is my second, my third, my fourth, etc. You don't have to rank them all, but you can vote for more than one entry. Uh, I didn't deploy it to the live website because that would be disruptive. There's a vote happening right now. Um, 
So what I did was I, I, I deployed it to test.inscript.org. Do you remember that website that I set up a few weeks ago? Well, it turns out it's useful. I, I deployed the gallery with a copy of the About Screen con Contest entries. And I'm inviting anybody who wants to try out the ranking system to go to test.inscript.org and vote again for the exact same contest that, you vote, that I just asked you to vote for. Uh, but only as a test, because it won't count. Uh, and let me know whether you think that the interface works or whether you think ranked vote voting is better. Maybe you think that everybody should just vote for, for one item on, on, only. But either way, um, I think it's interesting. Um, so did I actually work on Inkscape? Uh, yes, I did. Uh, there were some small uh, code fi fixes, um, some crash fi fixes and things. Um, but honestly, a lot of the fi fixes that I did were, were to the Inkscape manager itself. Uh, uh, this is Inkscape manager, the extensions manager. So uh, the extensions manager is the manager that allows you to install external extensions. It's a new graphical user interface. And uh, it's got a bootstrap that basically when you first load it, installs the extension manager. Uh, and what I did was I wanted to clean that up because it wasn't clear what was happening. Uh, and it, it, it was... A, wasn't quite right. So I've done it so that it automatically immediately installs the ex the the manager and launches it. So it, there may be a delay on the first run, but it will run immediately, which is great. Uh, I also added a recovery pro process. So what, what will happen now is if the extension manager has an error in it, it crashes essentially in, internally, um, it'll attempt to recover by by doing a self upgrade so it will look for a new version of the extensions manager and it will attempt to download it um, this isn't guaranteed to catch all problems um, but if there's a situation where there's an error and we can get a report out, out of it then I can publish a new version of the extensions manager and your version will self update itself to fix the error and fingers crossed this allows the um, extensions manager to be updated more frequently than the um, the, the Inkscape itself, because Inkscape is, is doesn't update that often. Okay, so I've done a bunch of fix fixes, but uh, have I actually implemented any features? And um, the answer to that is also yes. And to explain to you what the import clip art extension is, I should first of all explain to you the history behind the Open Clip Art Library Importer. Many moons ago, old versions of Inkscape included a feature called the Open Clip Art uh, Import. It was baked into the C++ and it made requests to a website called openclipart.org. This website went down for I think about six months and versions of Inkscape uh, that shipped with this OCAL extension, well it wasn't really extension, it was baked in, um, basically had a massive hole where they were making requests to a web server that we didn't know whether the web server was running or whether it was safe or, or anything. So we uh, removed the, f the functionality uh, from Inkscape itself, which I think is the correct thing to have done. But it means that people just didn't have a way to make requests to uh, import clip art anymore. So uh, rather than baking something into Inkscape, the whole the, the idea is to create an extension which is uh, you know more flexible. It can be updated more frequently, and uh, we we can put more checks around it. And so and that's exactly what I've done. I've implemented a new user interface for importing clip art. It talks to multiple services, so open clip art li li library, but also to the Inkscape website itself. Uh, it, uh, it, it talks to Wikimedia, and it talks to Reactome for all of those scientists who, who want to do bio papers. Um, and what I've done is not only have I done an interface, but I've also done a, uh, a, a an easily uh, extendable sources list so you can add your own source sources with a minimal amount of python expertise uh, all you need to know is basically how you make a request to a website to get a list of objects and how to get each one of those objects um, 
hopefully the four the four def defaults that I've created so, so far will provide enough of an example for anybody who wants to be able to create these for themselves. Um, hopefully pe people will have loads of them, uh, diff different web websites and everything. Um, I had to implement a uh, an ability to import both SVG files and raster images. So you can import like a JPEG or a PNG, but also an SVG, so it gets embedded in. Um, and also, this is thank thanks thanks to the way certain SVGs are, are, are implemented. I had to clean them because if you just import an SVG in without clean, cleaning it, you get some not not nice results. Uh, mostly to do with style sheets and you know. Uh, so so vacuuming, cleaning. Uh, I also implemented pagination, which is nice. So you can. Uh, you know, certain certain websites that you go go to, you ask for a page of results, uh, and it will only give you so many of the of the search results, and then it gives you a link for the for the next page. Uh, and I didn't want to make assumptions about how many pages a user wanted to see, so I implemented a way to, for them to go to the next page themselves. Um, and so, yeah, all, all you do is you go extensions, import, uh, internet resources. Uh, I haven't really fixed on a name yet. If you have any ideas, let me know. And, uh, you know, you can search for a specific item, you can double click on it, or you can click on it and press apply, it gets added to the running document, and that's it, that's pretty much it, you, you can run that as many times as you like to import as many things as you like. Um, and hopefully, this will be installable from the extensions manager, so you'll be able to go to the extensions manager, search for the clipart manager, uh, for the clipart importer, and install it into your Inkscape 1.1 release. Uh, and just like the extensions manager, the clipart importer should be uh, updatable more, more frequently, right? I should be able to add sources and improve the graphical user interface or add features to, to it. Uh, and people should be able to, to get those updates sooner than waiting for a whole Inkscape release. Um, so, I think that's it. I'm pretty excited about the Clipart importer. Uh, please do let let me know. Boost my ego. I love I love to to, to hear your thoughts on um, you know whether these things look like the the kind of features that you're you're interested in seeing. Um, and thank you very much for watching this long video. Um, and I'll see you next week.